Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it happens so fast. <laughs> it always happens so fast. Um, happy Wednesday. How are you, Katie? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Doing really, really well. Thankfully, another week is upon us. Uh, good morning, Karina. How are you? Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Jesse. <laughs> Um, doing well. It's, you know, it's been busy, as you know, um, you know, just with everything going on from, you know, helping our clients, helping agents, just everything is just, you know, just, ah, you know, it's what it seems like. I've uh, been talking to a lot more sellers as well. You know, people are getting definitely more excited. They're thinking that, you know, the, <laughs> the bubble's going to burst uh, type of thing. And so... Good morning, Marlena. Thank you so much for joining us. So I think that's kind of the talk right now. A lot of people are wondering what's happening in our market, what's going on, you know, what's, what's, you know, what does the future hold, which we all wish we had this crystal ball, right? right. I was, I was actually talking to Katie yesterday and good morning, Catherine. Well, good morning. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Catherine. So, um, and I was talking to, just letting her know that, you know, sellers right now, it's funny because I had this one seller who is thinking about selling and I was telling him how fast, you know, the days on the market were seven or less, you know, seven days is, is fast. You know, you don't realize how fast that is, but it is quick. So you got to be ready. Definitely. Um, but he, it's funny because you hear different people's perspectives and his perspective was, well, if the houses are selling that fast, then that means they're not priced high enough. And I'm like, no, that's not it. <laughs> you know, so, you know, definitely buyers still, you know, got to be realistic too. You know, yes, some are willing to pay a little bit above, just dependent upon the home, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, but we just, you know, it's all about educating and, and that's why we do these things. We want to definitely make sure that, you know, uh, our audiences understand, you know, what's going on in the market. If they have any questions, you know, we're always here to answer them. You know, we study this day in and day out, you know, so we know what's happening, you know, what buyers are saying, you know, if they're pulling back, what's going on with rates, rates are still amazing. Uh, I actually uh, spoke with someone yesterday and she told me, Sonia, I would have not been able to buy in this market. So I'm glad I bought four or five years ago when she bought. And I said, really? So we did the math and we did the numbers in comparison. And her payment was actually just about the same. If she were to buy today, the same home, she wow. was blown away. She couldn't believe it. She said, oh, my God, how is that even possible? And I said, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's why we need to definitely educate everybody out there, because they're coming up with these answers on their own. They don't really know the facts. So what would you do differently if you if you had the right answers and you knew, right? What do you think, Catherine? Well, I, I definitely see that a lot of people are intimidated by the prices. They don't realize that you do have more buying power right now because of the interest rates being so low. So, yes, it, it is definitely discouraging people. Some people, buyers out there, especially buyers, it is a little discouraging. But, I mean, it still can be done. Like you said, definitely. Absolutely. I agree. It's time. You know, it just takes yeah. time. You got to be patient. The right home will be for you and it'll come up. And then you're going to say, dang, I wish I would have waited, you know, or I wish <laughs> I would have waited. Because people tend to give up just when things are going to happen. Right. You know, just when they're that close or they feel like, wait a minute. And it's funny because we've had buyers where they've gotten their first offer accepted mm -hmm. and then they're like, um, I'm not sure if we want to still keep looking. I'm like, wait a minute. Have you not <laughs> seen what's going on? <laughs> you know, so yeah, they don't understand it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, I had that happen with one of my buyers as well. We were like, I, I got them into escrow. I mean, before we even hit the market and it was like, and then they were like, well, I don't know if I like this house. Can we keep, I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, but then they're, now they're like, thank you so much for getting us this house. We love it. I, I'm so glad you convinced us to keep it, you know, to stick with it. And I was like, yeah, because, yeah, it would have been a longer process if we didn't. But, yeah, 
If people buyers need to, but they if you if you tell them and you train them, then they understand. You know, then they're like not naive to the to the process. So absolutely, and I think them talking to other people too, you mm -hmm. know, they get to realize that you know because I know some people will say, hey, I talked to someone at my work, and this is what they they told me. Mm -hmm. And how is it even possible? Right. You know, and it's funny because they they think that there's some, you know, ulterior motive behind something. <laughs> and then you're like, no, that's not what it is at all. Um, but it's just funny because, um, like I said, it's just whatever's meant to be. It lines up for certain people. And you'll be surprised because we've had clients who said, I've been through three agents. You know, I don't know what's going on. And then they'll come with us and then, you know, boom, it's, it was, you know, it just happens. And then they're like, what, what did you do that they weren't doing? And it, it could all be timing. You know, I don't want to say that, you know, oh, you know, we're better than anyone else, but it, it's timing. And not only that, sometimes it's just, they weren't the right person meant to help them either. So, you know, sometimes you can't make certain things fit in, like they say, a, a square can't fit in a circle. So you just have to, you know, go with it and and know that what's meant to be is definitely, you know, it's definitely going to be, you know, for sure. Yeah. So how are how are you doing with sellers, uh, Catherine? Have you do you have any sellers who are who are saying that they want to wait or is there any other feedback that you're getting from them? You know what? Um, my I have well, I have one in uh, currently and. <laughs> Uh, circumstances have changed with them so they're gonna have to actually stop selling their house oh, okay their, their job situation but I mean I have had other um, uh, actually potential sellers say you know what um, I like my house I think I'm just gonna keep it I'm not gonna like try to go through the process of buying another one because basically if they sell their house they gotta find another one so that they, they're they're thinking well yes I'm gonna get all this equity but then I'm going to still have to like find another house and that that's daunting to them. And I kind of, I tried to explain that to them that it wasn't going to be as, you know, crazy as they thought, but they're like, no, we want to just keep it. So it just, it just depends on everybody's situation because everybody's different, you know, job yeah. situations, um, where, what their ultimate goal is, you know, do they want to stay in California? Do they want to move? Are they, you know, it, it, everybody's different. So it just really depends on the seller you know, what they want to do. Yeah. Their ultimate goal is really. Yeah. And I, I think that, I mean, for the most part, it should be an exciting time because, you know, who doesn't want to shop for a home, you know, definitely exciting time. But I think that yeah. there is a lot of um, it's, it's fear, you know, it's, it's, can we do this at the same time? You right. know, how are, how are we, you know, how is this going to happen? So definitely the guidance you know, the comfort, the, you know, the reassurance, um, all that is, is super, you know, uh, important, you know, it's, it's like, you know, showing, you know, your, your one-year-old that it's not, uh, you know, not to be afraid to go to the bathroom, you know, they're so scared <laughs> because yeah. they, they've never done. So it's a, and it's the same thing. So it's yeah. just being patient, you know, reassuring them, showing them that, you know, it's okay, you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, good morning, Vanessa. Good morning. Um, so, but yeah, I, I see that I'm seeing that happen. Um, I, it just, you know, it just really depends because it's funny because some of the, some of the, um, sellers that I talk to will tell me, well, you know, obviously everybody wants to make the most money, of course. Right. I mean, and they'll say, well, what about if I could, I should have waited 30 more days and then got more money. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. You know, it's the same thing when you when you you go play blackjack. You know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. You look at it, you're like, I would have done this, but then they roll it. You would have won or you would have lost. So it's just it's kind of the same thing, you know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, so, life is always a risk. Anytime, anything you're doing, it's a risk. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I I I know, like you know, we we had a. a you know, uh, a year last year that was definitely different from, you know, for us, you know, being home and, you know, not sure what was going to happen. And, and I, and it feels good, you know, to definitely, you know, be out. It feels different, you know, being yeah. out and you, you're, you just, kinda, it's weird though. Cause you, I mean, for me anyways, I kind of look around and I'm like, 
you know, it's just, you don't know because everybody yeah. has different minds and different ways of thinking. So mm -hmm. some people don't want you to get too close to them, you know, and it's like, you can't even cough if, even if your throat just itches for no reason, you know, everybody's <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah. um, so yeah, so I just think it's, it's, it's pretty funny, but, but let's, we'll take a look at what our market looks like. I mean, obviously numbers don't lie. So numbers are huge for us. So in Chino in the wow. last 30 days, um, active listings on the market, 31, uh, pending under contract, 57, 56 have closed. Average list price, 691 with sales price of 703. Again, we're still showing, you know, the increase. Yeah, that's like rancho numbers right there. Yeah, 12 right. days on the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Ontario, 55 listings on the market, which is not a lot. Um, 93 under contract, 110 closed. Mm -hmm. 602 and 604. So the numbers look to be getting closer, which I do want to say that I am noticing that we are overbidding, but we're not, you know, being ridiculous about it either because there came a point where buyers were having buyers remorse because they were overbidding so high. Right. And then they realized like, wait a minute, this is, you know, this is insane. I think for a while it was crazy, but I think it's starting to cool off. I, I mean, so too. Yeah, we still have multiple offers. We still have, you know, it's still competitive out there, but it's not ridiculous. Right. You know, I, I think I'm starting to see that as well. So and um, and I think, again, it goes with educating our sellers, letting them know what to expect um, during that time. So 23 days on the market here. Still great. And Harupa Valley market, 20 active listings on the market, 48 under contract, 39 have closed. 605 list price, 644. Uh, most of these properties have land. And uh, actually, I'm, I'm seeing most of them close for, you know, above um, the, the list price for sure in, in this particular area. People want land. Why? Because they want to be able to build a back home. That seems to be one of the most um, sought, off, um, sought after um, homes right now is, you know, two units, three units mm -hmm. um, or you know, a uh, place where they can put, you know, maybe their kids in the back. It's like, you got to go pay rent. You're going to pay rent. Might as well pay it in my backyard, <laughs> you know, so or bring family or, or what have you. But I am noticing that that is something that definitely a lot of people, you know, are looking for. Okay. And then here, 14 days on the market. It's great. That's good. So Katie is filling in for Brenda. So Katie, go ahead. Let us know. <laughs> Uh, can you make this any smaller? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the market update for Highland. Does that say 17 new listings? It does. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm having a high test right now. Um, <laughs> uh, the average is 488,000. The average days on the market is 16. The average sale price, or is that the listing price? Oh, that, you know, I'm getting all backwards. The average listing price is 491, and the average sold price is 488. Mm -hmm. And the number, the number of the days sold, does that say 44 days? 44 <laughs> days. Wow. And that seems like a lot of days. I mean, that but does it could for be. Highland. I'm really surprised. I was just on the MLS today and I was looking at houses over there. So I'm really it could be though. Um, it could be like, I'll give you an example. One of our agents here was in a 90 day escrow um, and they didn't put like, sometimes they don't change it from active, you know, to pending. Right. Although they're already negotiating and stuff like right. that, that That's happens cool. too. Yeah, um, or maybe so, it's contingent that they're trying to find another home or something. Yeah, it could be a variety of things, but. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and this is Fontana. 64 new listings. Wow, I'm surprised. Um, the average sold price is 567000 The average listing price is 554 so that's gone up a little bit. Average days on the market is 13. That's fast. Mm -hmm. And the number of the houses sold is 133. 
That's actually really good for Montana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rialto. Am I doing that one too? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rialto. <laughs> 34 new listings. The average sold price is 484. The average listing price is 477. The average days on the market is 13 as well. 63 homes have sold. San Bernardino, 70 new listings. The average sold price is 429. The listing price is 432. So it's gone down. The average days on the market is 14. And the number of the days, the number of the homes sold is 151. Oh, that's good. A lot of people are trying to sell in San Bernardino, it looks like. That's mm -hmm. good. There's tons. San Bernardino is huge, too. So it is it's big huge. Area. Okay. So Redlands, currently, right now, we have 30 active listings on the market, 70 are pending under contract, 80 have closed. The average list price is for us, I'm sorry, $649. The average sale price is $626. So a uh, little discrepancy in that, but and you're still going to get top dollar over there for sure. I mean, Redlands is a hot area and has definitely gone up in value since uh, COVID. So, And then the average days on the market are is 19 currently right now. And then Colton. Oh, my, oh whoa. Hello. <laughs> 15 active listings on the market. I think that's a record for Colson because right yeah. <laughs> normally it's like five. You know? So I think people are starting to understand that they're going to get a lot of equity and bang for their buck in Colton, possibly move out if they wanted to. So right they're now. They're not moving out. They're moving. They're finding a bigger lot, lot in Colton. Lot in Colton. All <laughs> that's true. That's, you're, you're right on that one. Yeah. For sure. Actually, it's funny because I had someone that had wanted to list their house in Colton, and I've been following up with them for probably two years about this certain house. And every time it's like, you know what? No, I think we're going to keep it. Our kids are going <laughs> to. Marlena. <laughs> Yeah, who, who sees that? Um, our, our kids are gonna live there. They're gonna live there. Don't worry about it. We're, we're, we probably won't sell for another couple of years. I'm like, okay. So, but I just keep following up. But yes, yeah. they they want to keep and stay in Colton. So yeah. So 17 are pending under contract. 28 have closed. Um, let's see. The average list price is 437, and then the average sale price is 425. So, yeah, I mean, definitely I, I've been seeing a little bit of the shift as there's not as many um, buyers overbidding on properties so much, I should say. It's not going as high. And maybe the appraisal, I think the appraisals are coming in probably where they need to be now. So, and then the average days on the market is 12, which is probably about right in Colton for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. the Rancho Cucamonga my hometown or me and Katie's, I guess Katie lives there too. <laughs> so there's 71 active listings on the market right now. 114 are pending under contract and 125 have closed. So the rancho market is really picking up here tremendously. I mean, look at right now, average list price is 806. 806. I just dumbfounds me right now. And then the average sale price is 820 and the average days on the market is 13. You know, just, I, I think about something, I just a little story tidbit on Rancho. My mom back in 97, when Rancho was booming, she was actually looking at a new home in Rancho and she was looking at Rancho and Redlands because they were going to buy. And back then, I want to say she said that the home that she was going to buy, and it was brand new, was like two something, like 250 And I was like, what the heck? Like, can you imagine if she would have just stayed there the whole time and how much equity she would have? It's just crazy. So, yeah, Rancho, it's a hot area. Everyone wants to live here. Probably would have had it paid off. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, by now. for sure. Mm hmm It's insane. Yeah, market. it is. Uh, yeah, every, uh, I mean, there's a lot of nice homes in Rancho, though. I mean, you could definitely find some. Hi, homes. Josie. Hi. Is it Josie? Every That's time Josie. I see a blank face, I think it is Josie. Is it Josie? The it face is Josie. Yeah. Good morning, Anne. Yeah, Hi. it is Josie. 
<laughs> so today I'm excited because we have a, a guest um, that, uh, you know, we're all about, you know, girlpreneurs, you know, uh, it's, you know, it just wasn't heard of, you know, before, you know, girls taking leaps of faith and just jumping in and becoming, you know, their own, you know, their own, you know, running their own businesses. So yeah. I, I, you know, I love Facebook. I love Instagram. You meet wonderful people. And I actually came across Cheryl, who is our guest, and I'm going to bring her on right now. Okay. Um, but I came across her and just her vibe and my vibe, like we just kind of wanted to get to know one another better, uh, just based on what we saw. So I, you know, asked her to be a guest and she agreed. So I'm excited. You know, she is a real estate agent, um, but it's she's much more than that. So I want her to explain and kind of go over that. So I am going to welcome Cheryl as our guest with us. Some, let me see. Hold on real quick. Put some music on while we bring her in here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Welcome, Cheryl. <laughs> Hi, girls. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Great. Thank you. <laughs> Fabulous. So thank wow. you so much, Cheryl. Welcome. Thank you, Monique, for welcoming her. And like I said, thank you so much for, you know, joining us this morning. So I'll give you the floor. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and share whatever you want to share. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yes. So um, we, Sonia and I have not even met in person, but again, I mean, social media is so powerful that, um, it brought us together. Um, I don't even know how I started following her or how we, we were even following each other, but I saw a, a post that she made, I commented, and I loved how she just responded back. And we just kind of, like she said, connected. And I feel like we have so much in common. So it's I'm so blessed to be on the show to see if mm -hmm. whatever I may share, whatever I may bring to the table, uh, to see if it's a blessing to anybody. Um, mm -hmm. So about nine years ago, um, I, my husband and I started flipping houses. Um, I was, in my previous life, I was a teacher. So in my mind, you know, I grew up thinking college, master's degree, having a career, like that's what was taught to me. So right. I came to this country um, when I was in the sixth grade and that was like my mentality, you know? Um, all right, just get a job, get a career and, you know, focus on that. Um, so what changed for me was, um, when I got pregnant and I, um, I was going to become a mommy, um, I encountered that, that motherhood, like instinct of like, oh my goodness, do I want to go back to work and, and keep my career or do I want to stay home and raise my baby? Mm -hmm. So, um, at that point we, my husband had a corporate job. I had my job and we really didn't have any options. I we were like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Like, I want to stay home, but we really were relying on my income as well. So my husband is always a dreamer, great ideas, always like finding new ways to do things. Mm -hmm. He used to watch flipping shows, right? And he said, well, if you want to stay home, why don't we start flipping? <laughs> like, okay, like, where is this even coming from? Like, I've never done it. I have no idea, you know, what it takes. I don't even know how would it would go about it. But he put that challenge on me. He said, if you, if we can get started with flipping, you can stay home. You can stay home with your baby, you, you know, because that's what I wanted. So, I found a way, you know, I was like, I am making this happen. I don't even know how or what, but uh, okay. we, we just made it happen. Um, we saw um, one of the people that we used to watch on TV. I don't know if you guys remember like nine, 10 years ago, Armando Montalongo, one of the first flippers, he was coming into town for like a little workshop or a little conference. So we signed up and we went to go learn what flipping is all about. Uh, so we went to that, to that, to that, you know, little workshop. And uh, from there, obviously they invite you over to like a bigger coaching 
program or workshop or whatever. So we went on to that. It was like a weekend thing. It was a couple of thousand dollars. We went on to that and um, and from there, they invite you to like a bigger coaching opportunity where it's like one-on-one -on -one coaching, a lot. That was gonna be like $40,000, right? So at that point, I told my husband, okay, I think like that's too much. I'd rather take those $40,000 and see if we can just go out on our own and start doing the flipping. So I told them, give me 30 days, give me 30 days to put into action what we learned into that in that workshop, in that three-day workshop. Give me three, 30 days and um, see if I can make it happen before we go out and spend another $40,000 to be you know, in this, in this program. So yeah, you guys, sure enough, I, um, he allowed me to, well, not, I don't want to say allowed, but he, uh, he gave, me, you. yes, he yeah. gave, yes, yeah. because, you know, he's the one that had to be working 70 hours a week for like the first few months for us to try to get like our flipping business, because you know, with flipping, like you don't see the profit for like six months, you know, it's like mm -hmm. getting, finding the property, you know, finding the property is the hardest thing, right? Finding the property, then rehabbing it and getting the buyer and everything. It was like six months. So he definitely was very supportive in that way. And yeah, I mean, after we did our first flip and I saw my, uh, our profit, like each mm -hmm. month, my yearly salary, I told myself like, I could never ever just go back to, to what I was doing before. Like I, we, we started seeking more, um, just freedom. It's not even the money it, for us. It's more like the freedom to be the parents that we want to be, or to be the um, the wife, husband that we want to be to each other. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what happened? <laughs> because she keeps coming on and off. Oh, is, is it cut off? Did it cut her off? Yes. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. I, we can't hear her anymore. <laughs> Can you hear us, Cheryl? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, That's awesome. And I think, you know, that that just goes to show, you know, you definitely, you know, have to be on the same page, you know, whether you're doing it alone or, or whether someone's helping you, you know, you definitely have to be on the on, you know, on the same page you know, ha have to see the same end result, you know, yeah. you have to, and you have to also know that there's no guarantee, but you know, you know, and you know, it's funny cause your story reminds me of, of mine. When I first started, it was like, look, I'm going to do this. I don't know exactly how or what or when, but I'm just going to go for it. And all I knew was that I was going to give it a hundred percent. That's all I knew. And I knew by doing that, that I couldn't fail because I knew what I was willing to do. And I think that a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, um, you know, entrepreneurs, women or, or male, it doesn't matter. But I think a lot of times, you know, we don't have that confidence. And so we're kind of in and we're out and we're in and we're out because we're afraid to fail. Um, but I think if you know what you're made of and you know what you're going to do every day, day in and day out, you, your results are going to be there regardless. And so it just, it's nice to hear you, you know, your, your words and everything else. Cause it's just confirmation um, as to the hard work you put in. I know a lot of people that went to that seminar, you know, um, I actually had a client of mine who told me she went and she came to my office with this big old book that she got. She said, because she knows nothing about real estate. And she says, okay, so basically they told me I have to find distressed homes. Um, how do I do that? <laughs> you know? And, right. and so it's like, um, you know, it's, you have to have all the pieces to the puzzle, you know, because it's not that easy. If it was, obviously everybody would be doing it. You know, like you're saying, it takes time to get money back. Sometimes you don't get as much as you projected because there's issues that arise. You know, there's so many things. Um, and actually, um, Cheryl um, sent me a video last week of a home that she just bought actually not too far from my home in Bullhead City um, that she actually bought and they could flip it or they're going to keep it to rent it. I, I, you know, I don't know what you guys decided to do, but, um, but a very nice property. Um, so it's just, tell us like, where do you, how do, do you find your own deals? How do you come up with the deals that you guys decide and how do you decide if it's something you want? 
Oh uh, yes, for sure. So you know, um, it's it's been a process of nine years. You know, nine years of doing this. Um, when people ask me like, "How are you doing this?" or "How are you getting the properties?" I honestly wish I could tell you guys like that secret like formula or like a way to do it. But each property, I feel like, comes with its own story. Um, it's all it's been all about building relationships. Um, you meet people. You build relationships. You gotta stay in the fire. You have to stay connected into what you want to be doing. So I'm constantly trying to meet new people, build friendships, relationships. Um, we are definitely a couple of our words. So if we say something, we go through it. We uh, don't burn people. It's it's just like. Um, we believe in if we're going to make some money, we want the other person to make some money too. We believe in building a team and abundance. Like if people ask me for help, like, Hey, I want to start flipping. I've taken people like under my wings, like left and right, because I believe like in abundance, there's enough for everybody out there. So sometimes people, an agent will bring me a deal because they have a good deal, but they don't know how to flip it. They don't know what to do. So I partnered up with people that way. I um, I made friendships with people who are like that have their own niche. Sometimes you got to find that, right? Like I have a, a, a realtor or an agent who's like amazing at getting me HUD properties because that's her niche. That's what she knows and does and searches on a daily basis. I have a relationship with somebody who is in the probate business I have um, so it's just about building relationships and um, and letting people do what they're good at and delegating and you doing what you're good at sometimes like so I don't have the manpower anymore to be searching for deals like I used to nine years ago I mean nine years ago I was on the phone all day long. My husband would be like, Hey, this is a good property. Call it. I'd be like calling it, you know, you know, trying to submit an offer. No offers were ever accepted at all. At all. I must've called like a thousand properties. No offers were ever accepted until my husband was like, we need to switch things up. What can we do better to improve our business? So then we switched it to, we started calling the listing agent. And that's how I started making relationship with the listing agents. I would let them represent me. So that was like a double whammy for them. I got the property and then later on I would let them relist it. So that's how so much like was, you know, so much like was built throughout the years just by helping, helping others while we were also trying to build the business. Um, so I think that that's how it's been like, Right now, I, I have properties that are brought to me just by previous relationships or different agents, and that's how we've worked our business, pretty much. That's good. Yeah, that's very interesting and very, very true. Um, I, I myself, you know, was never into, you know, the flipping and everything else, but I can tell you how many deals that, you know, we were able to to give, um, you know, to, like you said, to people we had relationships with who would, you know, constantly call us and say, hey, you know, um, if you have anything, you know, let us know. And and it's unfortunate, though, because I wish I would have had a different mentality, you know, at that time. Um, but you just always thought that, like you're saying, let, let them handle what they need to handle, you know, because that's not what I'm good at. Um, so, but yeah, it is definitely... Um, really really interesting good morning helen <laughs> hi helen <laughs> yes so i mean that's pretty much how it's been um and yes we my husband's very active in the business as far as like he, he's the one that has the eye for what's a good property what's not he's just again over the years he's great at pulling comps he's great at knowing the area so um for example, like we're expanding, we're wanting to go out of state. So we do have our first property in Arizona. And the way that we were able to acquire that property was also just by calling the agent and saying, hey, I'm like a strong investor in California. I want you to represent me. I really want this property. So she said yes, yes at the beginning, right? And then I think she got flooded with so many calls that she forgot about me. 
she wasn't answering my calls anymore, responding. So then we figured, okay, we lost this property. You know, we'll keep searching, keep searching. But my husband is like very persistent. He's always looking every single day. And one day he saw that property pop back up. And he's like, Arizona property is back in the market. Call it. So I'm the caller. You know, I'm the caller, yeah. <laughs> the relationship builder, because I love that, you know, and uh, he's like behind the scenes. So, yeah, I called this age and I was like, hey, do you remember me from like three weeks ago? Blah, 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 blah. She remembered me. She loved the persistency of it. She, 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 you know, she, uh, her previous buyer fell out of escrow and I, I just reassured her that we would be solid buyers. And again, we were, we, we did, we were solid buyers and kept our word throughout the whole transaction. So that's probably another relationship that I have built in Arizona. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. It's good to, I mean, in, in Arizona is not really that far, so it is good to have, you know, those you know, those relationships in, in the States, you know, that actually border, you know, where we're at, because there is a lot of opportunity in other States as well. So right. that's awesome. That's, that's really good. So, um, where are you based out of? Cheryl? Uh, yeah, right now I'm in Ontario, California. Oh, okay. So you're very close to us. That's where yes. we, we are. We're in Ontario as well. Yes. So good to know. See, cause I didn't even know that. <laughs> so yes. that's good to know. Definitely. Um, so what is your, tell us what your week looks like. Cause I know you have multiple streams of income. So you do have other businesses that you run. So tell us kind of what, what your average day looks like. Wow. I get this question a lot. And I tell you like each day is so, so different you guys. And like, so different, right? Um, we are, uh, my, my children are homeschooled, so they are with me pretty much 24 seven. So it really depends on when my schedule calls, you know, like I have a, you know, it's like checking up on properties, um, going to pick tile for this one property. Like yesterday we were in LA checking out um, a pro two properties that we have under contract and meeting with the contractors to get bid for that. Um, after that, it's like two hours in traffic. I, I got home. Uh, I had a Zoom call at 530 because my other stream of income is I do Monet. I partner with Monet, which is um, anti-aging, um, hair care and skin care and wellness line. So I, I like to dedicate a lot of time to that, to that as well, because it's just been like an amazing blessing for me. So I got home at 530 for a Zoom call. We did an opportunity call to show people the business. And then I hopped on another Zoom call at six o'clock because I have a, um, uh, a Latino Monet group. So I do Latino uh, Spanish speaking trainings on t on Tuesdays. On Thursdays, I do my English training. So my day is different, you guys. Like, uh, like on Friday, we will be in Palm Springs because yesterday I got a call from one of my eight, one, an agent that he has this property that he wants to assign to me. So I told them, okay, the soonest I can be there is probably Friday. So we'll be there Friday, make a day of it. So our days are so different, but the beautiful, yeah. beautiful part about it is the freedom. Like I always tell people, like, I think they misunderstand. They think it's all about money. And if people think that like, fine, whatever. But for me, it is not about the money. It is about the freedom to do what I want, when I want, with who I want and help others along the way. So that's kind of my journey right now. Um, my husband uh, still has his corporate job, but uh, very, very, very soon, uh, because of our multiple stream of income through Monet, we're gonna be, he's gonna be leaving that job very, very soon, leaving that job and we're he's going to come and focus more on our real estate like he's going to be more involved with our real estate our flipping our investments because we want to grow in that way i feel like we were we were very blessed to be put on this path so if we can give back to people and help people um that's what we want to do but uh our time is super super limited because like i said he still was is working a lot but he's that's going to stop pretty soon. And we're going to focus on finding a way to build a team so that we can help other people flip. So we got to pan that out and, 
and he's going to be more involved in this side so i can be a little bit more involved with my with my Monet girls and helping them um grow their business as well that's awesome that's good that's definitely a, a goal um you know for you guys you know to obtain i think that's that's good you know and and you like you said you just the more people you help and i've noticed that myself is you know the more you help the more things line up for you um because it's it's it is important to share you know it is important to to share your gifts and you know whatever it is that you have to offer um because there's a lot of people that can benefit from you know whatever it is you know that you share and and like you said a lot of people do believe that they, you know, they'll, they'll tell you, this is how you do it, but they don't want to really tell you how to do it because they're afraid, you right. know, but it's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with sharing the likelihood of someone actually executing is very slim to none. Right. You know, you see all these people lining up paying for these seminars, you know, you, that's why these ads sell, you know, all these ads like on Instagram, or I see all these ideas, people will pay for it, but they won't attend it. They won't execute it. They really don't, you know, take full advantage of what they paid for. And uh, they just, you know, they just want it to naturally happen and just be easy. And that's the thing. It, it, nothing is, you know, everything there's work, you know, and everything that we do. So and you're, you know, nine years, like you said, it's been nine years and, you know, you're finally reaping the benefits and you're feeling it. And and that's awesome. Thank you know, that, that really is. So. Well, thank you so much um, for joining us. I truly appreciate it. Like I said, you've been a wealth of information. And like I guess it definitely, I'm sure, you know, very inspiring, motivating to some that I do have a, a few, you know, girlfriends who are looking to, you know, to quit their jobs, to start in, you know, just to be, you know, just taking that leap of faith. And, um, and they ask me, you know, what are my thoughts? And I tell them, you know what, I, I can't hold your hand every day. Uh, you know, I can't babysit you. I can't do any of those things. But if you know what you know, if you do what you have to do and you know what you have to do, then then there's nothing, you know, there you, you there's nothing you have nothing to lose. It's just, you know, it just depends on why you're doing it. Right. You know, like, you're saying, is it is it money? Is it freedom? Is it, you know, doing something that you really love? You know, because I really feel passionate about what I do. And I think that's why, you know, it, it, you know, the success has been there because of that. When you're not passionate about it, it, it you get burnt out very fast because sure. this, this business can be very draining, you know, if you don't, if you don't have that, you know, but I got to make it happen. You know, this is going to happen. You know, it's because people do often tell me, you know, how do you keep going? How do you keep going? And so it's just for me, I love it. You know, the challenges have always been something that I, I've loved. So, Definitely. but yeah, when you're when you're passionate about something, it's not work. You know, it's not. It doesn't feel like work. I mean, it is a lot of doing and showing up and being consistent. And things do not happen overnight. And it's like failing, but you're really not failing if you keep going. You're learning. You know, so and it's just kind of like getting over your fears, because every time you get over a fear, it's like, oh, that growth spurt happened. Something happened. So I'm all about that. I'm all about mm -hmm. that. There's so when people ask me, like, would you do it all over again? Or should I do it? Like, should I be an entrepreneur? Can I st should I stay home with my babies? I tell them I would do it all over again in a heartbeat because it's so it's such a different world. It's such a different yeah. world, but it's so worth it it's so worth it and if i can be of help to anybody or if i can guide anybody i mean reach out to me i'd be willing to have a discussion with you a lunch with you to share what i do and um and if i can help anybody in any way absolutely we appreciate that cheryl so thank you we'll definitely take you up on it we're so close we would yes. love to have you come in uh one day and you know just share a story with us you know it, it definitely will inspire some i'm sure and maybe those that are thinking about doing it, but just haven't, you know, decided to do it. And basically all you got to do is you just got to go for it. For sure. Got to go for it. You know, that's, that's basically all it is. So, well, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate you. Um, again, we're here every other week, um, just trying to, you know, share some good information and bring you some value on your Wednesday morning. 
So I hope you guys all have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>